네, 3프로 TV가 만들고 한국이 감탄하고 세계가 즐기는 어, 지식 콘서트 어, K 인사이트를 또 세계에 수출하고 있는 어, 글로벌 머니 톡입니다. 이제 더 이상 어, 한국 시장 또는 동아시아 시장에 머무르지 않고 전 세계 시청자들이 어, 이 영상을 통해서 어, 지식과 인사이트를 얻고 있는 글로벌 머니 톡. 이 되고자 오늘도 또 열심히 일하고 있는 어, 저는 이 프로고요. 어, 저의 제가 보기로는 저의 왼쪽 여러분이 보시기에는 여러분의 오른쪽에 저의 오른쪽에 계시는 강남규 중앙일보 선임 기자님도 함께 소개합니다. 어서 오세요. 안녕하세요. 강남규입니다. 네. 아, K 참... 지식 아이돌. 아 정말 아... 진짜 그 문장을 어떻게 나와 쓰지도 않고 네, 더 이상 글을 써줘야지 읽는데. 네. 더 이상 아, 이제 한국의 수출품은 어, 지식과 인사이트다. 그렇죠. 네, 그 최전선에 서 계시는 네, 서교도 음, 없고 네, 수출력군. 네. 그래서 저희는 열심히 부지런히 전 세계의 그 이른바 지식인들을 노크하고 네. 메일 보내고 톡 보내고 전화해서 어, 그들의 인사이트를 몰래 몰래 이제 수입하고 있지 않습니까? 그렇죠. 일종의 가공 무역. 네. 음. 오늘의 인터뷰 대상은 야 최근에 아주 핫한 인공지능 반도체와 관련한 그렇죠. 업종이네요. 예. 네. 최근에 아마 우리나라에서도 출판이 돼서 매우 화제가 될 예정인 음. ARM이라는 인, 저 반도체 설계 전문 회사. 그렇죠. 영국의 네. 그 캠브리지에 있는. 음. 어, 사실 뭐 삼성하고 제휴를 한다. 네. 내지는 뭐 이런 뭐 과장법이 좀 적용돼 있는데 음. 엔비디아의 어떤 뭐랄까 최대 경쟁 회사가 될수 있다. 어, 그렇죠. 네. 네. 이전 세계도에서는 이 회사의 반도체 설계도 없이는 반도체를 못 만드는 그렇죠. 매우 중요한 회사인데 이 오늘은 이 ARM의 에 실제로 최고 경영자를 어 섭외를 했다가 저희가 아. 에 그분이 바쁘시다고 해서 바, 좀 바쁘기도 바쁘고 이분이 더 잘한다. 네. 음 나는 뭐 온지 얼마 안 돼서 잘 모른다 그래서 <웃음> ARM 모든 것의 마이크로칩이라는 책을 쓴. 제임스 애슈턴 기자를 어, 인터뷰하기로 했죠. 사실 이 부분에 네. 대해서 우리 그 이, 글로벌 모니터크의 <웃음> 오케스트라 주의자 네. 이재상 PD가 이이 음. 이 저기 제임스 애슈턴을 인터뷰를 해야 된다라고 강력히 주장하고 음. 섭외도 해왔습니다. 오 리얼리? 예. 오. 그래서 사실 오래간만에 제가 음. <웃음> 이렇게 이렇게 차례지 밥상에 밥숟갈 딱 올려서 오, 웬만하면 ODM으로 납품하는데 오, 이번에는 어. OEM이네요. 그건. 아 그렇죠. 아, 시키는 대로 그래서, 했다 이번엔. 그래서 정말 그 음. 우리 그 이재상 PD. 네. 예. 지금 얼굴이 나가고 있지요. 네. 이렇게 <웃음> 생긴. 제가 보기엔 이 정도로 생겼으면 저는 PD 안 하고. 아 그렇죠. 어 저는 연예인 할 텐데. 그럼 예. 바로 인터뷰를 어, 들어가 보겠습니다. ARM 모든 것의 마이크로칩이라는 책을 쓴 제임스 애슈턴 기자가 연결돼 있습니다. 어 제임스. 어, 인터뷰 응해 주셔서 감사합니다. 사실 저기 영국 제조업 19세기나 이름 세계적인 이름을 알렸고요. 산업혁명 덕분에 산업혁명을 주도했고 그러나 20세기 와 가지고는 변변한 어떤 제조업체가 없어서 음. 그 허전하다 싶었는데 어떻게 그 기자로 자기 조국 영국의 제조업 내노라 하는 기업 하나가 새로 탄생해서 그래서 관심과 관심을 갖고 쓰셨는지요. 이쓴이 책을 쓴 동기 그게 좀 궁금해서 이렇게 길게 여쭤봅니다. 자, 아, 안녕하세요, 여러분. 아, 저는 제임스 아스턴 이니다. You know, clearly, when you think about the British history, United Kingdom history, and everything that we did in the Industrial Revolution, um, we have a lot to live up to. Um, so, but there are still, you know, great companies um, across the UK, whether it's in industry or creative um you know media design all sorts of things and i think arm in particular so i've been a financial journalist for um a few years and i've been i've done a lot on tech and telecoms and so on and then you know later in my career i've written a few books and that i wanted to write a book that was um that told a great british corporate story what is the the company because the the business publishing world does it does a great job and there is of so many books around all of the silicon valley successors the giants and i know there are several books on um you know samsung and um you know and many others and i thought well what is that great british company and i and i thought well it's got to be fairly modern because we need to talk about the now not the 19th century anymore 
Um, it needs to be high tech and it needs to be global. And that is quite a short list. And I thought actually if, if thinking about ARM and what it does and how pervasive it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's designs, and I can go into what it does specifically if that's of, of interest. I mean, its designs are licensed a thousand times a second, 30 billion times a year. So if you think about British exports, think about how many people are watching Premier League football this weekend. No. Think about how many people are wearing, um, you know, a Burberry raincoat. And actually, there are many, many more people walking around with a, with a handset or whatever that has arm uh, blueprints in them. And so I thought, this is the story. And, um, and, and I, I stupidly thought, I know the arm story. I've interviewed the CEOs. This, is, this can't be too difficult. But of course, it is an incredibly complicated industry. And as I started out with it, we had all the stuff with lockdown, um, we had the, the, the battle that still rages between the US and China, and we had the, um, the semiconductor shortage. So why were people queuing around the block to, to, to get there? Because there were no PS5s. Well, it's because someone somewhere didn't make enough $1 chips. So I was really fascinated at, at ARM in particular over 30 years, but then also how it fitted into this incredible global supply chain. So I tried to pour all that into the book. 질문 좀 드리겠습니다. ARM의 주가가 주, 최근에 그 인공지능 붐을 타고 어, 지난해 9월에 상장했는데 벌써 두배 올랐습니다. 이제 한국의 투자자들도 많이 어, 투자한 종목 중에 하나인데 객관적으로 어떻게 보세요? 뭐좀 너무 많이 오른 거는 아닌가 싶은 생각도 좀 드는데. I think there are two things. There's growth, there's growth of the company and there's growth of the, the stock price. And of course, up until you know, six months ago, September, it didn't have a stock price. Um, and I think the company has been um, growing well. That is very, very recently, actually. In the last year or two, the revenues have, have, been, um, have been flattish. And, and, the, and the main reason for, for that is this company is, um, there are lots of growth areas of potential going forward and data centers is one of them. But this company is heavily, heavily reliant on consumer electronics for I think at least 50% of revenues in, and, and within there the biggest element is is smartphone and you will probably know smartphone had a slow year um, so I think the the, the shares um, so it did well to float on Nasdaq um, when it did and then I think there's been two trading statements since then and the second one in particular I think the challenge for the company was they talked a lot about the artificial intelligence opportunity on the roadshow to sell the company to investors um, to, to begin with. And you, you of course, uh, you know, there's no reason why the company would mislead and nor are they allowed to do, but the investors still want proof. And I think the last trading statement did show that there was proof that ARM could benefit from um, the AI uh, revolution and demand that we're, that we're seeing now. Now, ARM is not NVIDIA. You know, the NVIDIA share price, is a, the value is a little bit higher than $140 billion, billion. But I think the reason the value is where it is now, um, some people say there is a bubble. There is um, the, the market has run ahead of itself for, um, in, ter in terms of AI. But certainly, I think there's a belief that, um, that ARM can, can tap into that growth. So, James. 사실 그 AI는 이제 어떤 뭐랄까 암이라는 회사의 자체 내부의 경쟁력은 아닌 것 같고요. 시, 시장 상황이 바뀐 것 같고요. 그렇다면 은 암의 진정 기술력, 경쟁력 음. 이 그걸 좀 소개를 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. 음. You know, I think you have a very sophisticated audience but ju just to remind people, you know, what does arm do? What's the magic of arm? And of course arm doesn't, arm doesn't make anything. Um, you know, it's so modern. There are no factories. It, you know, it it um, it has the blueprint, which is the title, which is the title of the which is the title of the book, the Everything Blueprint. It has an instruction set set architecture. Um, it owns a rule book, um, which determines um, you know how software and and hardware talk to each other. And um, you know that rule book and that predictability, that language, if you like, um, you know helps. Uh, you know, billions of devices work together efficiently. It helps. Um, I think the latest figure is 13 or 14 million software developers around the world who are all working 
um, you know, within with these with this arm um, architecture. So where does that all come from? That goes back to um, uh, a, a company called Acorn in the UK that was looking to it was looking to produce a next brilliant chip, a jump forward. Um, in the, the the late 1980s, it had been a, a home computer maker and it wanted the next one. And um, they came up with something, two characteristics which were um, abundantly clear in the, the late 80s when this was developed and, and are still really, really clear characteristics today. What does the ARM architecture um, give you? Um, it operates at low power um, and it operates at low cost. And, um, uh, you know, they're quite old fashioned metrics, um, but even in the, 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 the most advanced device, what something costs um, and how much power it consumes, particularly if you look now in the in the data center world, which is, you know, uh, an industry that's chewing up such a huge amount of, uh, of energy. These are really, really important um, characteristics. Uh, well, I'm going to ask you to ask you to ask you to ask you to 어, ARM이라고 하는 회사는 그동안 어떤 역사를 갖고 있는 회사인지 뭐, 뭐 기회가 됐으니 쭉 한번 설명을 좀 해주시면 재미있게 들어보겠습니다. Arm the company, which was born in November 1990, um, was a joint venture between Acorn, that's the British company that came up with this low power, low cost chip design, and Apple. And Apple was a very different company back then. Um, but they were looking for a they were looking to launch an early uh, portable device, which was called the Newton. It was called the um, the message pad. It had it had uh, different names. And their challenge was uh, they'd gone to AT and T, big US company. Of course, we know them as a telco operator. If you go back in history, they were making the chips as well, but AT and T couldn't provide the, the technology they needed. They couldn't provide a chip that was powerful enough, cost effective enough and cheap enough. So um, they took a risk. The, the cost of, of uh, it, it was cheaper to pour $2.5 billion into a joint venture company with an unproven technology than it was to fix the problem with AT&T. Um, and that's how ARM was born. Because Apple didn't want to buy from Acorn, Acorn was a, a competitor of sorts at the time. So I think the, the so that Apple relationship goes from 1990. Um, they were a big uh, uh, very briefly on Apple. They were a big investor in. They, obviously, they had 50% of 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 ARM. When ARM came to market the first time, Apple made a huge profit from that 2.5 billion dollar investment. They made 800 million dollars of profit. Um, that IPO was in in 1998. After that point, um, ARM became very very important partner to Apple. Um, they started using its technology during that real golden decade. Um, they used it first of all in the iPod, then the iPhone, and then the iPad. And you see in the details that emerged around the time of the the IPO um, this year. Um, that Apple relationship is now contracted to at least um, 2030, I believe. So what you have there is um, this amazing 40-year uh, relationship between those two companies, which, are, which is absolutely um, at the um, kind of cornerstone for, for ARM. And what you had, if you were, I mean, th this is... This is um, this is very, you know, very, very historical. But the the first device that came out, the Nokia device with ARM technology, um, was the sixty one ten. It was the little candy bar phone. It had a little aerial, and the main reason people will remember this phone is it's the first one that had Snake. If you play, if you played the Snake the Snake game um, a long time ago, you're probably far too young. Um, but people played the, uh, the the snake game on that. And what 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 that device was for many people, it was the the first truly portable mass market device, mass market mobile phone. And the key thing was again, you talk about those ARM characteristics: um, low power, low cost. Um, Nokia worked in such a way they crunched down the different components onto um, you know smaller in a smaller chip size and so on. Um, if you have a chip that 
operates uh, and, and basically the arm was at the center of the communications chip it was the baseband chip that um that uh that, that managed all of the radio functions and so on if you have that operating um, and it's not um sucking the life out of your battery it means two things you can you can take your phone out and the battery will last at least all day that was a total innovation in in the late uh, 1990s and secondly the the other way you know if if your battery doesn't last all day what is the solution to that it's a bigger battery which is why all those early mobile phones you had the phone and you had a, a suitcase or something um a, alongside it so this um solved it i mean so that so that was this was absolutely game changing for for nokia for ti and for arm but the 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 breakthrough was when um amazon's uh aws amazon web services um moved into custom made chips so that means the the user is effectively designing their own chip in in the past people would always buy this in from intel or whoever amazon uh, like apple wanted to design their own so amazon needed a, an architecture to to base that on uh, and they chose arm and so their their chip the their um own chip for the data centers they have is the graviton um they are a huge operator in cloud computing and so now um you know arm is getting great traction in in data centers james 어 보통 이제 한 회사를 이해할 때그 회사의 주요 인물들 그리고 그들이 어떤 기여를 했는지를 보면 좀좀 머리에 큰 그림이 그려집니다. 음. 어디 이 회사의 역사를 쓰다 보니까 아시는 그 중요한 인물들의 그 그들의 기여 그걸 좀 정리를 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. Well, I think you've got to talk about the people who came up with the 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 architecture in the first place, and that was that was two people working together, um, Steve Ferber and and uh, Sophie Wilson. It's quite an easy company in the way in a way because it's only had four CEOs in in. Uh, in uh, 34 years so i think each of them has given um something something different to it so robin saxby sir robin saxby was um was the first ceo and um i think what he he is very important and what he brought was he'd been at motorola he'd been a vice president and done a lot of, he had a great sales background and he recognized that the business plan you know it was okay but this company was not going to survive and thrive based on orders from acorn and apple and, and his view was we have something here that could work globally and actually we need it to work globally we need to go out uh, and we can't just sit in cambridge so he i mean he he spent many years on a plane winning those um you know asian uh japanese korean uh electronics companies was really really important um so i think he for to to have to have that real international mindset from day one i think was something really important that he brought um he brought to the company and then i think the one to point out now is rene hass um who is the current ceo and took over two years ago and um he has a background at a number of companies he was nec for for some years um i believe it was at xerox and then and then sometime at nvidia but but i think he brought um the company was privately owned as um for a lot of the time that he was there and he was kind of like a, a COO figure before he was CEO and I think there was um you know real focus on certain industries that that he brought so how do we really really um crack automotive because clearly the car is going the same way as the phone you know it's a computer on wheels um it is a library of apps and it needs a um a language and an architecture to to navigate that so they really focused how do we crack automotive how do we crack um data so i think um i think he's had a good run as well 조금 범위를 넓혀서 사실 ARM의 고유의 경쟁력 그리고 역사를 좀 살펴봤는데 그렇다라면은 좀이 글로벌 반도체 지형에서 ARM이 처해 있는 상황 사실 그 아무리 경쟁력이 뛰어나더라도 지형이 음. 바뀌면은 그 안에서 회사의 운명이 달라질 수 있으니 한번 살펴봐야 될것 같습니다. 요즘 그 어떤 말할까 경쟁 상황 내지는 반도체 지정학적인 상황 그걸 그 상황을 좀 어떻게 그 속에서의 암이라는 회사가 어떤 위치를 점하고 있을까요? 
So I think, look, this this industry broadly, and if you want to talk about share prices, I mean, this has always been um, the boom and bust industry. It's either going really, really well or really, really badly, I think. And um, there's always been that hope that it will smooth it will smooth out. And, I, you know, I don't think we're there yet. Um, clearly, there have been um, uh, there's been uh, very, very lumpy supplies over over the last few years. I think the. Um, Companies were racing to catch up with demand from lockdown, um, and then I think um, there was a, uh, a quieter period because companies were stockpiling and uh, supplies. I, I look at the industry and think of it as, as almost a, um, uh, a series of monopolies or near monopolies. So you have one or possibly two companies that are that, that kind of own a chunk of the market, and the, and the market has splintered over time because it's so capital intensive, um, I think. So you used to have a, a, a operator that did all the did all the design, did the manufacture, did the package, did, did the distribution and made its own tools. And that's all, all broken up. And you see through the industry now, you have those um, amazing specialists. So, um, you know, TSMC uh, in manufacture, ASML, um, if you're aware of them, the Dutch company that makes the, the lithography tools. Um, and then even in something like the um, the software design tools, two companies in the US, Cadence and Synopsys, control the market. They're both worth m many, many billions. So, um, you know, I think when times are good, you can see that those shares are just, um, you know, soaring. I mean, ASML, for example, with its um, extreme ultraviolet uh, machines, these are... Uh, Hundred and fifty billion dollars a time. Hundred fifty. No, no, sorry, hundred and fifty million dollars a time. But they're so complicated; they can only make maybe one a week. So they're struggling to keep up with the demand. And I think what AI has done is it's created a um, uh, new monopolies, if you like. I think there's there's you know once again the haves and the have-nots. And um, I think Nvidia over history has been an incredible um, seller of its products. It 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 it, um, it invented the term GPU, graphics processing unit, and then it made sure everyone knew that it was the home of the GPU. And, um, you know, it has been lucky to some extent in, in the way that the, the application of the GPU has, has flicked from graphics to AI to, to you know, all parallel um, computing. But I think the, um, I think from a stock point of view, it's, it's a question of whether, uh, I think you know share prices do tend to um, overestimate how good things are. 네, 저 약간 좀 어, 어색한 질문으로 들릴 수는 있겠습니다만, 저는 그이 반도체 설계 회사가 어, 영국에 있다는 거가 다소 좀 어, 생소하거나 호기심을 자극했습니다. 무슨 말이냐면 대체로는 이런 회사들은 어, 창업을 하거나 혹은 활동을 할 때. 어, 실리콘 밸리에 있었을 가능성이 높아 보이는데 어뭐 사실은 반도체 디자인 설계를 하시니 어그 회사는 당연히 인재가 밖에 없고 인재가 경쟁력이라면 반도체 관련 인재들이 많이 쏟아지는 쪽에 당연히 회사가 있을 것 같은데 영국의 캠브리지에 있다는 게 어, 혹시 어떤 계기 어떤 동기가 있었는지 그거 좀 설명을 부탁드리겠습니다. It's always a big question. So in terms of who who does arm have in Cambridge they have um 2800 staff so it's their biggest center um it is the um still described as the headquarters um a lot of the leadership now are on the west coast of the of the states um but but 2008 is by far their biggest center which is there so um i think there are competitive demands for for all of these industries and um i think going back in time people um you know would travel a long long way to work for arm i mean i spoke to someone who became very senior at the company um he moved there from new zealand um his interview was one phone call and then he got on a plane now that's a long time ago you know that that was before zoom but um look i think i think cambridge has the um you know has the critical mass and you do have people um coming up through the university I and mean, the links between um university and industry are very close but it's true that um some of the focus of cambridge has switched towards um you know biotech you might say over the last um uh, 10 years ago and so the government are, are focusing now on what more we can do around semiconductor you know 
it's very difficult to say, well, here's how we create an, another arm. I mean, we do have, what are the UK um, expertise in this area? Well, clearly we have design and arm is a leader in that. There's also a lot of raw material science that we do and, and you know, materials such as, um, well, graphene is one, and but there's a, there's, there's a lot of others. So um, I think uh, creating the next arm is very difficult, um, but I think doing more for the ecosystem and the um, skills and training and investment. I mean, the government 10 years ago put um, a, a number of quite forward looking. There was uh, a number of small investments in startups around quantum. And so, you know, some of those are looking more uh, more promising now. But um, you will know this is all very long term stuff, isn't it? You have to place your bets and see what <laughs> what works and what doesn't. And and most importantly, as I keep going back to, what can be made at a price that people want to pay. 사실 요즘 반도체가 어떤 의미에서 정치적인 그 생산품이 되고 있습니다. 음. 그래서 미중 갈등, 지정학적인 변수를 좀 살펴볼 수밖에 없을 것 같은데. 어떻습니까? 그 암이라는 회사가 미중의 갈등 사이에서 어떤 운명에 처해 있을까요? So just observations on on the the trade policies. The, the US has been squeezing China in particular for five years. Uh, you would have thought that a situation that was tense when Donald Trump was in the White House would be less tense when Joe Biden um came into the white house now clearly that's not the case it got worse and it's not changing anytime soon and i think what what is um what's worrying the us is that actually um you know chinese companies are still making advances um they're working i think at the certainly at the seven nanometer um you know process node and they're doing that kind of with their arms tied behind their back um and i think the what is what this is this is kind of where capitol hill and wall street um you know digress because um so many of the us companies i mean look at something like um qualcomm i mean china is a huge market i think it's a third 40% of uh, of revenues so um the us had been very specific about um what it didn't want china to access and i think it's becoming less specific the ban is becoming is becoming broader and more companies are getting um, caught in that now so i think it's quite uncertain as to who can't supply 자 오늘도 어, 아주 즐겁고 재미있는 인터뷰였습니다. 네. 일단 뭐 보내 드리셔야죠. 아 예. 네. 저 음. 제임스 다음에 또그 나는 개인적으로 사실 암 주가가 어떤 조정에 들어가면은 음흠. 그 오늘 하, 하신 말씀과 견주어서 다시 리뷰를 좀 해, 하기 위해서 인터뷰를 요청하고 싶습니다. Thanks so much for listening. Um, investors in Korea, I hope you enjoy the book. 자, 오늘 재미있게 인터뷰 잘 배웠고요. Yeah. 저희는 다음 시간에도 또 야, 어떻게 또 정말 이렇게 그좀 논란이 될것 같아요. 음, 사실은 음. 그그 혁신 경제학자 빌 제인웨이 한번 우리가 이미 글로벌 모니 토크에 네. 통, 토크를 통해서 사실은 국내의 그 구독자들에게 소개가 됐습니다만 빌 제인웨이 예. 어, 영, 아, 영국의 제인. 워렌 더핏이라고 예. 불리는 음. 그 영국의 그 유명한 군수업체죠 BAE 시스템스라는 회사를 음. 워버그 핑커스 사모펀드의 그 파트너로 있으면서 음. 어, 회사를 설립을 주도했죠 사실은 음, 사실상 그리고 음. 그 회사의 잠재성을 보고 투자 도 하고 뿐만 아니라 어, 혁신 경제라는 하나의 그 이론 체계를 구축한 음. 어떤 게 혁신의 조건이고 경제학적인 의미에서 예. 그런 이제 체계적으로 설명을 해줄 수 있는 분입니다. 이 분에게 인터뷰를 요청을 해놨습니다. 음. 그 주제는 전기차 테슬라의 앞날은 어떻게 될 것인가. 음. 그다음 두 번째 지금 챗 GPT 등 생성형 AI의 어떤 뭐랄까 혁신성의 진단 진짜 음. 혁신인가? 아 그냥 신기한 물건일 그냥. 수도 있으니까. 그렇죠. 세상을 바꾸는 게 아니라 그냥 네. 재밌는 물건일 수도 있으니까. 사실은 뭐 이, 우리가 말하는 누구가 말했지 않습니까? 음. 어떤 신 기술, 신 발견은 네. 단기적으로는 과대평가되고 장기적으로는 과소평가된다는 음. 유, 유머가 있지 않습니까? 그렇죠. 지금 예. 현재 그렇다라면 생성형 AI, ChatGPT 등 음. 생성형 AI가 이게 혹시 과대평가되고 있는 건 아니냐 단기적으로 아, 그 점에 대해서 한번 신기하긴 한데 네. 뭐 세상을 바꾸거나 널리 쓰이지는 않을 수 그렇죠. 있는 그렇죠 제2의 인터넷이 될 아. 것인가 제2의 
뭐 시티폰이 철도. 될 것인가. 어, 그렇죠. 음. 아, 네, 그런, 예, 그런 재미있는 시각을 가진. 네. 요청을 해놨습니다. 네. 음, 또 되면 저희가 또잘 포장해서 네. 저희가 신곡 발매하듯이 저희 여러분께 또 음, 보내드리겠습니다. 자, 오늘 글로벌 모니터는 여기서 마무리하고요. 여러분들은 또 이제 이런 인터뷰 재미있게 또 보시고 나서 저희에게는 어, 감사 아, 정도만 해주시면 <웃음> 잘될것 같습니다. 감사합니다. 네, 고맙습니다. 예.